Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, of course, after a very interesting review of the major stories making the headlines this morning, let's tell you a little bit of what happened today in history. We're starting with a uh, birthday, a happy birthday to a diva, a legend, an icon in Nigeria's education history, uh, Professor Grace Alele Williams. Who let, is, me, uh, let me do what Nigerians uh, do, my personal person. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was born in Benin, so I have a claim. You know, no, we were born in the same place. It's, it's a legend, you know, that uh, we would celebrate for you know, many, many, many more years, even after she's gone. She's currently 87, or she will be 87 today. Um, and she is uh, Nigeria's very first female vice chancellor at the University of Benin. She also is the first Nigerian woman to receive a doctorate degree. Uh, she became a vice chancellor of the University of Benin in 1985 when... Uh, I'm not even sure if I was born then or I was a few months old, but uh, it, it, it is a, a phenomenal story um, of how uh, she, of course, took charge of the University of Benin at a time when the university was dealing with something that is still in existence today. But at that time, it pr probably was at its peak, and that is cultism. Um, she, of course, is known very well because of her leadership uh, style, her uh, ability to steer the university in the right path, and, of course, at the same time, deal with the menace of cultism. Professor Grace Alile Williams uh, published a book titled Modern Mathematics, a handbook for teachers in 1974 uh, before she became a vice chan uh, chancellor. Um, something also that I'm, I'm happy about is uh, her being a professor of mathematics mm -hmm. uh, because it's very, my, my dad also is a professor of uh, mathematics. Okay, just a quick quote because we have quite a number of uh, things to mention to you this morning. Um, in a 2004 interview, two things she said that I'd like to recount here. She said the excitement I felt on receiving the news um, from Professor Jibril uh, Aminu, that's the then Minister of Education, yes. had more to do with seeing it in terms of opening up the field for women than anything else. Uh, she said, I saw it as an opportunity to show that women too could rise up uh, to, the educate, um, to the occasion. Um, I, it's a bit of a quote, so just uh, be patient with me. Also, I knew what the weight of the expectations of women are. Um, they were eager to see how things would go, and I was not going to let them down. And then, mind you, she says, those who appointed me felt I was qualified for it. So it was not just a case of wanting to satisfy the yearnings of the women folk. Um, that's, um, it wasn't that simplistic, that's yeah. what she said. So it's not about pushing women. Uh, she's one a pace setter, however you want to look at it. Um, she was... Um, a member of the African Mathematical um, Union Commission on Women in Mathematics in Africa and as vice president of the Third World Organization for Women in Science. In 1987, she received the Order of the Niger and in 1994 gave the Distinguished Annual Lecture at the National Institute of Policy and Strategic Studies Kuru here. Uh, she is uh, elected a fellow of the Mathematical Association of Nigeria and the Nigerian Academy of Education. Yes. Um, I, the reason I, I wanted that quote out is sometimes we think, oh, because I'm a woman, I need to get this opportunity. No. You still need to do the, to do the work. Yes, you Fantastic. have to do the work. You have to be exceptional. She is exceptional. I mean, anybody will do maths. I just feel that that person is, <laughs> you know, something else. We talk. Okay, uh, that's it today. It's her birthday, and we thought it was, you know, it's fair for all that she's been able to accomplish and yes. the limelight she's been able to uh, shine on the affairs of women in this country and the welfare of women in this country. You, she deserves to be celebrated. You mentioned her being a pace setter, you know, and earlier, you know, when we introduced, I also said the University of Benin has, of course, done it once again, um, appointing a female vice chancellor, Professor uh, Lillian Salami, who currently um, is the vice chancellor. She was appointed in 2019 um, as the vice chancellor of, of the, uh, the University. University of Benin. So uh, kudos to Uniben. Um, okay. Well, my, we're my, being whispered to that we have very limited time. So I will <laughs> rush this one. It's very important. Uh, the UK MPs on this day in 1969 uh, voted by a big majority for the permanent abolition of the death penalty for murder. Uh, the voting was 343 in favor and uh, 185. 85. Under an earlier uh, murder in abolition of death penalty act 1965, 
hanging was suspended for an experimental five years, but uh, the results from today in history's uh, decision, uh, voting rather, yes. uh, put a permanent end to that. I would have given you a lot more uh, background, but of course, uh, time is uh, not our friend. However, I must mention that um, the death penalty still re remains for offenses like treason, piracy, and violence um, until uh, 1998. 1998 yes. um, it was eradicated, I guess, in the CIS protocol of the European Convention of Human Rights, which formally abolished the death penalty in the UK and uh, ensured it could not be brought back. Now, well, one point that I will quickly mention is, you know, one of the reasons they took this decision um, back then, their Home Secretary um, had stated that between 1957 and 1968, the figures with regards to murder and violent crimes didn't seem to be different. And so there wasn't any evidence to show that the death penalty and um, capital punishment was making any change in their, in their crime rate. And so they, you know, it was one of the things that uh, came in favor of the decision to abolish it. And also um, a few uh, miscarriages of uh, justice that yes. uh, took place that, you know, this And once somebody's dead, decision. you can't reverse it. So um, no. just a quick update on some of the data that goes with this. In 2020, uh, a total of uh, 53 countries still have the death sentence. Um, they employ a variety of methods to um, accomplish this. Um, in 2019, uh, the United States executed 25 people Ooh. across seven states. Now, let's come home. Nigeria also practices it. But since, um, let me see now, um, since... Um, uh, 2006, I believe, uh, we've not had an execution until the recent one during the COVID-19 um, uh, that uh, was carried out that's making a lot of people uneasy. Um, I'll, I'll go on and give you, uh, Amnesty International recorded 657 executions in 20 countries um, in 2019, and that's a decrease of 5% compared to uh, 2018. Um, in Nigeria, the death penalty is authorized by law, uh, but since the transition in 1999, death sentence have often rarely been carried out. In 2006, like I mentioned, no execution took place until June 2013, when four prisoners on death row was hanged. Also worth mentioning uh, today in history, uh, world death against World Day against the death penalty celebrated on October 10. The idea is to draw attention. Uh, more attention to the need to abolish um, uh, death penalty. But it is worrying that uh, we still have um, 53 countries of the world yeah. that have China, not abolished. Saudi Arabia, Iran and Iraq, you know, are still, yeah. you know, the highest uh, figures. You know, and, you know I, I, yes, we need to go, but I, I just want to also quickly chip in the... Uh, one thing that, you know, I'm also very, very concerned, you know, about is, yes, there is death penalty for war crimes, there's death penalty for treason and, and you know, what are other major uh, crime that you can mention. But, you know, it's sad that in Nigeria we still hear about the death penalty for things like blasphemy um, and people being sentenced to, you know, very, very, very insane a uh, number of years for... Wait, don't forget we have the Sharia law that yeah, has I mean, a different that's the part um, interpretation that just... uh, as well. It's, it, we needed to uh, bring this up and mention the fact that that sentence still exists. A lot of persons are working hard round the clock to ensure um, an end to it so people get life sentences. But when you now look at the crimes that are being committed by same human beings, you, you begin to... It's, it's a challenge, to be honest, when you think about the crime and the punishment now. Somebody yes. takes another life and then you put that person in life imprisonment. Yeah. But uh, that's uh, it uh, for that. Oh, I must mention here that China... There is skewed data from there. There are, not, there are no clear figures because of the, you know, the secretive nature, how they guard uh, data coming out from there. But there are allegations that they carry out almost a thousand execution on a yearly oh, basis. Yeah. But that is not um, a concrete. That's Amnesty International now speaking, but they don't have you know, the data to prove that. Also on this day, worth mentioning, I know we're out of time, but also on this day, uh, December 16, 1966, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights was adopted and opened for signature 
ratification and ascension by the General Assembly resolution. It became, um, it became a law, it came into force rather on March uh, 23, 1976. Uh, the Covenant, as it were, commits parties to respect the civil and political rights of individuals, including the rights to life, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, and freedom of assembly, among other rights. Um, Nigeria ratified this um, covenant on uh, July 29, 1993, but uh, that also needed to be mentioned. We know that rights of citizens here is not as uh, it should be in uh, being upheld. Human rights is still a question in Nigeria. I guess Hello. That's where we'll Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.